All right guys, so today we're looking at the Norco Bigfoot. We're comparing the 2021 model against the 2020 model. So if you've not seen the Norco Bigfoot series before, this is the entry level series. Okay, so we're gonna start with the 2021 Bigfoot 3. Big changes to this year is they've actually gone to the Shimano Dior 12 speed drivetrain. In the previous year, they actually had the one by 10. So that definitely limited your gear range to it. This is a large frame and they actually have a nice curb in it here, so they've moved the bottle cage mounts up. You also have bottle cage mounts below and on top, which is kind of cool. You still have a port here, so you can actually integrate a dropper post right within the frame. Overall, between the two bikes, between the 2021 and the 2020, there's not a huge amount of changes. They've taken some key parts, which will make a big difference, but there's not many changes overall. They've changed out the tires this year, so they've gone to a nice V tire. Um, these are a good high quality tire. Big benefit is they're actually studdable now. So if you are doing a lot of commuting with it on kind of roads or icy tracked um, areas, the studs make a massive difference. If you're trail riding with them, we don't see a huge amount of people upgrading to the studs. Obviously it does depend what your trails are like. If they're fairly well snow packed and groomed, the studs help, but they're not a huge necessity. So this is really for that commuting crowd. The 12 speed on the Dior is just a fantastic setup. You can get those extra low gears in it. It does still have the clutch, same with the 2020 version, which is nice. So then you can stiffen up that rear derailleur. So how the clutch works is essentially open. Um, it allows it to loosely flop around. So bashing around makes it easier shifting. But it, say you were going down a bigger downhill, you can actually stiffen it up and then this becomes much stiffer to move, less likely to rattle around and skip gears or bounce off when you're doing kind of rougher, aggressive terrain or downhills. As we compare to the 2020, you can see that much smaller chain ring setup to it. So it's still the Dior system will still shift nice and fast, but it is definitely not got the range of the 12 speed. Both of them still have nice mount points for pretty much all your racks. And that includes up on the main frame and down on the fork. You're able to really load these bikes up and go on an adventure with them. Again, with this year, they're both going to the cable disc brakes, which works well and is easy to maintain. So who's the Norco Bigfoot for? Essentially anyone looking to get into fat biking. The big benefits between either the 2020 model or the 2021 is that Norco chooses a longer, lower geometry than compared to the Trex. As well, with all the mount points on either model, you're able to really load this up. So if you are commuting with it, it's actually gonna make it much easier to carry all the gear with you. And that being said, if you're in winter commuting with it, you need more gear. You'll be bringing in boots, snow pants. So if you're commuting to work, you're probably bringing a lot more clothing or changeable wear just to be able to, just be able to tackle the weather. And whether that's in rainy streets or full of snow, it's definitely nice to see that. Both of them can be routed with a dropper post, which is a cool little feature. The drop post will make it a little easier in the rougher terrain and especially over bumpy snow filled streets. It's nice to be able to get that seat out of your way and it's just gonna be making the bike easier to handle, easier to manage. The cable disc brakes are cheap and easy to repair, which is a nice feature. So although salt and winter mud and stuff like that will wear down those cables much faster than say a hydraulic line, the benefit is hydraulic lines still have metal ends and metal joints, so there is a higher chance of rust and a higher cost to replace. A cable is cheap. You can get cables for like $10, $15, if that, and you can easily replace them regularly. Definitely, if you're deciding between the two, if you have that option, I know many places are sold out, the 2020 with the cheaper tires and 1x10 definitely limit you. So if you're in a hilly area or you're gonna go through a lot of rough terrain or deep, deep snow, the 12 speed is gonna make a huge difference for you. As well, those tires alone are a little more aggressive, a little more off-road or rougher terrain ready than what come with the 2020 model. So it is a nice upgrade they've put on there. They've increased the price of the bike really to cover the cost of the drivetrain but you get an upgrade in tires too. So there is benefits to paying a little bit more for the newer model than taking the older one. It's not as easy to just pay the 200 bucks 
also to upgrade this, you actually need a little bit more. So as I was saying, Norco chooses a longer, lower geometry. This keeps your center of gravity down a little more stable, a little more along the lines of adventure bike, commuter bike, as opposed to someone like Trek who uses essentially their Excalibur geometry on their fat bikes. This makes it easier to handle heavier loads or rougher, deeper snow. Truly what a fat bike is designed for when you look at the Furleys, they're definitely designed more to be a trail bike. So you can still commute with them, you still do stuff like that, but they're gonna perform a lot better on the trails, especially during the summer. Now these things you can definitely ride in the summer, no problem. Essentially your agility is gonna be a little less, and when we nitpicking here, it's pretty similar, but it is something to consider if you're looking between two. If you're trying to use this as a year round bike and you really care about summer trail performance, something like a Furley, for example anyway, is, is gonna perform much better in that aspect. In winter, on the trails, they're gonna be pretty similar. The Farley will still have a bit more agility to it. And then when it comes to commuting, this one being lower and longer is actually gonna be a little easier, a little less twitchy to uh, go through snow and other terrain like that. As well, with all these mount points, more than likely you'll be putting on a rear rack with it. You can look up some cool front racks it's much easier to mod this one to a commuting lifestyle or a loaded up adventure lifestyle than say the Farley. Two big changes are the tires and the drivetrain. This one actually has a one by 11 on it and this one has a one by 10, but you can see you get much bigger range. You're able to gap out the spacing a lot more in the one by 11 setup than you can with the, with the 10. And either bike's a good option. Obviously this one has the better parts, but Original retail to original retail, this one's approximately $200 more. Obviously, if you can get your hands on a 2020 model, there may be a sale price on it, which is always nice. So you might be able to offset the costs of upgrading the tires a little bit easier. All right, guys, so that's a brief overview of the Norco Bigfoot series comparing the 2020 model to 2021. Not a lot of changes here. They're essentially the same bike. It's just that drivetrain and tires which have been switched out. Biggest thing is, if you want one, I definitely get down to a store and get one. Check out the links to see all the info below and see if you can get your hands on one as soon as possible because these things are selling really, really fast. All right, guys, good luck out there and thanks for watching.